Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we just want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast, Worship Experience. We thank God for you showing up here today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be something that will be shared that will be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everyone, all of our first timers. If this is your very first time here, logging on, tuning in, we want to acknowledge you. We just thank you so much for supporting us this morning. There could be many other platforms that you're watching, but God has you tuned in and locked into this one today. So we don't take it for granted that you're here. And so we just thank God for you showing up today. Hey, y'all, all of my Spirit of Fire folk, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. We're praying for you continually, continuously. Our intercessors are constantly keeping you before God. And so we just thank you so much for your continued support. Even during this time of a pandemic in the earth where we haven't been able to come together uh, physically, but we are together virtually and there is no distance in the spirit. So I pray over all of your households. You know, I miss hugging on some of you. I've seen some, haven't seen uh, others, but I just listen. We miss you guys so much. And so we want to make sure that we keep it a point to lock in, to stay connected to one another. So that's why it's important for us to remain in contact and fellowship and to, to whether it's uh, via Zoom or some intimate gatherings, there will be socially distanced and things of that nature. But we just thank God for you. We pray for your continued peace, success, healing, prosperity. We know that there are people that have gone through some things even during this pandemic. There have been some things that have taken place in people's lives, but I'm here to, to encourage you today. I believe that this message will be an encouraging message. I believe that I'm supposed to pour faith into you today and to build you up and to stir you up. I, I'm thankful to God for what he has done and is doing in our lives. And so I thank him for what he's doing even in this ministry that we declare and decree that we are growing by leaps and bounds. We declare and decree that God is bringing us forth. We declare and decree that he has given us a voice in this earth and that our voice is heard, received, recognized, and re well respected. And so when this word comes forth today, I'm expecting the power of God to begin to manifest. I'm expecting it to manifest not only here with us in our studio, but also wherever you are. I'm expecting the tangible presence of God to manifest. Many people are going through things, whether it's mentally, physically, financially, uh, relationally. I don't care. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, God has an answer. God has a remedy. There is healing that's available. There is light at the end of the tunnel. There is light in the midst of the thing, the storm that you're going through. And recognizing that God says, I'm a very present help in time of trouble. So even when you're going through trouble, we got to learn how to trouble our trouble by speaking the word of God, by declaring and decreeing, by praising God. We begin to talk about praise in the discipleship class not too long ago. And so we begin to talk about when we begin to praise God, we magnify God. That means to enlarge him in our eyes so he becomes bigger than what we're going through, bigger than what's coming against us. And when you realize that the greater one abides on the inside of you, there is nothing that's too hard for God. And so because there is nothing too hard for God, there's nothing too hard for you. And so we just thank God for it today. See, I'm already getting stirred up with this. So let's, listen, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to jump into this thing today. And I want you to go ahead, click your shares, your likes. I'll go to our YouTube channel for those that maybe are not on it. Click on the subscribe tab. Click on notifications so that whenever content that we're downloading, you can be notified. Listen, go to Twitter, go to Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you are, Periscope audience, wherever you are, what we like to call our parachurch. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call it our parachurch, our Periscope church. And listen, God called us to go viral and to go virtual long time ago. And one of the things is there is he knew this time was coming when he spoke it to my heart. He knew we, we would be in this season. And so God says he will not do anything in the earth unless he first reveal it to his servants, the prophets. And so there are things that God is setting us up for, for the long haul. And so church, as we know it, you know, we still will begin to come together and begin to do some things together as a group. But I believe the scope of church as we know it has changed because even the scope of society has changed. 
And for so many years, the church has been behind the times. But I believe that God is bringing us from the a background to the forefront now. And so even as innovators in technology and science and the wisdom of God being released, because this is a time where God's, God's kingdom has to be advanced. It has to be mandated in the earth. And we as the church are Jesus' hands and feet because we are the body of Christ, the anointed one in his anointing. So we're going to go ahead and go before God in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to bring forth wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently. And we ask you, Father, right now that you will begin to manifest through signs and wonders. Holy Spirit, you are the helper here in the earth that you will confirm the word with signs following and that the people will be edified. Jesus will be glorified and that all things will be done as unto you, Lord. So we just give you praise, glory and honor for it. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And we do covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Father, thank you right now for the yeah word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. We thank you for prophecy. We thank you for diverse tongues. We thank you for those interpretation of tongues. We thank you right now for the power gifts to be in operation. We thank you right now for the gift of faith, the gifts of healings and working of miracles. For Father, you declare that signs and wonders and miracles will begin to follow this ministry. And so we set our faith in agreement for it now. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Yeah, we serve notice on Satan right now. Yeah, Father, we thank you and we give you praise and glory for it. He is a defeated foe. And Father, we thank you that your word will go forth with might and with power today. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for it now. In the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. All right, y'all, glory to God, hallelujah. Well, man, I'm telling you, God is doing something wonderful. He's doing something great. There's a lot that's going on. I know many people have many questions, many concerns, many ideas about you know, what's happening with the pandemic, with the virus, with just things going on in the earth. You know, we even scripture talks about there will be wars and uh, rumors of wars, but don't don't let your heart be troubled. He says the end is not yet near, but Jesus is coming back soon. Sometimes I believe sooner than what we think. And so God is telling us it's time to arise and to shine in the earth. And he's given us a kingdom mandate to teach his people who they are. And so as I'm talking about these things, I want to make sure I keep everything within the time frame that I'm allotted today and that I want to take for you. But there are some things that are on my heart that's constantly on my heart that God is renewing within me, that God is bringing to my mind, that he's bringing and bringing up in my spirit that I need to begin to share with you guys. And one of the things today that I believe that there's a message that I preached some time ago that I believe I need to come back to it and spend a little more time with it and sow it into your hearts today. Um, because, you know, when, when I talk to individuals, when I minister, I've been in ministry for over 23 years now, and there are some common themes that I've seen with people. Uh, one of the things is we need to understand who we are in Christ. We need to understand our identity in Christ. And when we don't understand our identity, number one, if we don't understand who God is, that we don't recognize how big and how wonderful he is, that we won't even understand who we are because we've been created in his image and after his likeness. And so we need to begin to understand, number one, who he is. Then in turn, we will begin to understand who we are and the power that that possesses and carry and the weight that you carry, that things can be changed and rearranged by you and I, that we can change our environment. We can change our atmosphere. We are the dominating force in this earth. And you have to get that in your heart. So I need you to be ready to receive this word today. I need you to be ready to receive it because I'm going, I wanted to give it a different title, but you know what? I'm going to just hit this thing. We're going to talk about manifesting the sons of God. 
we're going to talk about us manifesting who we are as believers in this earth. Because so many times believers live beneath the privileges, the rights and privileges that we have as believers on Jesus. And we really need to dig into this thing. And so when I prayed and I asked God, I said, you know, it was like, Lord, can you give me three, you know, give me some keys. If I can break this down into maybe some key components, at least three key components that I can begin to share with people, that I can begin to get them on track to start showing them. It's been something. Let me, let me, let me share this. I feel like this is coming up in my heart. Throughout my life, I've been an individual. I've always been a person who's been pretty much calm under pressure. Sometimes, you know, in the past, some would have thought I was just nonchalant about things or didn't care. It wasn't that I didn't care. It was just the fact that I was cool under pressure. That was just something God put in me, that I wasn't easily rattled by things that showed up, the things that happened. And that was one of the things God put in me to be a leader, because you can't freak out as a, lead, as a leader. And every time something go wrong, your emotions get the best of you. And then you get in this frantic panic. And it's like, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And God, need, God wants you to now begin to view things from his viewpoint. And one of the reasons as I begin to grow in understanding who I am, that I always knew that God had me to, to work in these areas of, of the confidence that it takes to be a believer, the confidence that it takes to be a leader, the confidence that it takes to walk in this earth, and that no matter what comes up, you got the answer and you know that you have the answer. Why? Because he who abides in you carries the answer. And now the thing is, how do we tap into it? How do we pull out wisdom? See, see, wisdom is in the heart of man, but a man of understanding, the scripture says, knows how to draw it out. And so there have been times. Yeah, there have been times I freaked out. Yeah, there have been times I've been afraid. Yes, there have been times that I've used my own power against myself by speaking negatively. Yes, I understand those things, but I also understand that the quickest way to come out of a thing is to number one, grab the word of God. Number two, renew your mind to the word of God. Then number three, release it with the words of your mouth. And so I want to show you that you need to be confident in who you are and stop taking negative images that Satan has put out there, that people put out there about you. And you're going to have to be confident as to who you are in Christ. I'm already kind of in this thing now, but um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start here from the beginning. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the beginning. So I'm, I'm, I need to settle myself down a little bit so I can just sow this in you and I can get this in you. And I'm ready to jump into this thing, man. To manifest your sonship, you need to understand that you are a child of God. As a born again believer on Jesus, you have received what the scripture says is the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry, Abba, Father, or God, our Daddy. When you understand God is your Father, then you realize this relationship is different. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious people of Jesus' day, they got hot when Jesus called God his Father because the Scripture says it made himself equal with God. Because, yeah, they understood him as the Lord, their God. They understood him as Jehovah, but they did not know him as father. And this is why Jesus came, was to bring us into right relationship with God. He says this, I want y'all to come into what I already possess. And so what you have to do is believe on me. That's what Jesus said. If you believe on me, listen, I'll bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. You'll be raised up to be seated together with Christ in heavenly places. You'll receive the spirit of adoption where now you can legally call God your father. You call him your father, just like in the adoption process where you adopt a child, that child takes on your name. That child has all the rights and privileges of being your child. And listen, I don't care what has happened. The, even the laws of the land will stipulate that you are the legal guardian of that child and you have the responsibility to take care of that child. It's the same way. God, when you come into the family of God, God is obligated to take care of his children. And God is not a deadbeat dad. Our father is not a deadbeat dad. He will take care of us. He will watch over us. He will watch over his word to perform it. And I just feel like somebody need to be encouraged in that. 
that you got to know that you are not alone in this situation. You are not alone. God is with you, man. And he has promised. And he said it like this. I'm going to give you my spirit in the book of Ephesians. I'm going to place my spirit in you. And he is going to be the earnest of your inheritance. He is the first but the possession is like this. God is saying, I'm giving you the Holy Ghost to show you how serious I am about everything else. And he abides in us and he lives in us. So let me let me let me go back. So now 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 that we understand that as believers right now, watch this. You got a right to call God your father. So now that you understand that God is your father, the Bible also declares that we're heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus. So that means we have all equal rights and privileges that Jesus has. So do we. Oh, what are you saying? What are you saying? You mean to tell me you calling us Jesus? Wait a minute. No, we're not Jesus, but we are part of his body. We are a part of him. Now, if you see my hand and you see my, my, um, my arm and my, my, if you could see my feet and all of that, would you say my feet or my hands are any less part of me as Michael may? Would you just say, well, my hand is one thing and my foot is another thing? No, you look at the totality of who I am. You look at the full physical specimen and says, that's Mike. That's who that is. So when people see us, this is why we're called Christians, Christians, Christ-like. So when people see us, they're supposed to see him. I'm telling you, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this earth. In the book of 1 John. I'm telling you, you got to understand who you are. Listen, listen, it's in me. This is in me because this is my assignment. This is my assignment to the body of Christ is to teach God's people who they are. It's to teach them their identity. It's to teach them their authority, rights, and privilege. Glory to God. And I declare in the name of Jesus, listen, the word of God is effectively working in my life, my family's life, and in this ministry. And I declare and decree that we will see a supernatural explosion of the goodness of God, of the favor of God, of the wisdom of God, not only internally, but externally, that men need to see that God is good to you. Men need to see you grow. Men need to see you prosper. Men need to see your relationships working because if it ain't working for you, why should they want to even part of your God? If it, if it don't look like God been good to you, why would they even have confidence that he'll be good to them? And you need to begin to receive that. You need to have that reality in your life. You need to set the example and you need to come out of that pit and begin to sit in heavenly places in Christ, in your thinking, in your believing, because right thinking equals right believing, which equals right living and manifestation of the proof of the favor and the goodness of God. Okay, come on, boy. Settle. Okay. Whew, man. Man, I didn't intend on starting it like this, but it just started coming out of me. I was ready to preach this thing today. <laughs> so now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me settle down now. Let me settle down now. Let me settle down now. There are three things to begin to function as a son of God. When I say son, daughter as well, it's all inclusive. A son and a daughter of God, that you are now a child of God, and you must be firm and you must be confident in three key things that I want to share with you today. And that's my focus for today. It's the latest foundation for you to begin to develop in these things to see the manifestation of God's goodness and his grace in your life at an unprecedented rate. Some of you, man, let me say this. This stuff is rising up in me as I'm saying this. Some of you have been crying for years. Some of you have been sowing for years. Some of you have been praying for years. Some of you have been believing for years. Some of you have been serving for years, and you have yet to see, and you've hung on to faith. You've hung on to words that's been said to you. But unless you apply consistently what's been said, you'll never see the full manifestation of the glory of God, but you got to believe it first. And I believe God says that this month, the month of March will be a month of the pivot. It'll be a pivotal month for many people that that means that this is a pivot is a turning point is a point of reference where everything, where you turn, where things turn in your life. And so God is saying 
Will you take this challenge? Will you pivot? Will you move in another direction? If what you've been doing hasn't been working, you need to pivot. And God is saying, I need you to believe right. I need you to think right. So now you can put on the promises of God, put on what it is that you've been praying for and believing for. And then the discipline that it takes to get things done, the disciplines, the, uh, the discipline, the diligence, the determination. When we talked about the D3 lifestyle, that we got to begin to function in this stuff on a consistent basis. So number one, Number one thing you need to be firm and confident in is your identity, your identity in Christ. You must be confident in the fact that God has made you righteous. And because of that, you are in right standing with him. That is one of the first things you need to understand. You need to understand that you are, listen, you've been made righteous. You have been made righteous, that you're in right standing with him. The Bible declares in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 through 21, that now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. It's talking about Jesus. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be made. For he hath been made, watch this, for he hath, um, made him to be sin for us. God made Jesus to be sin for us. Jesus took on the sins of the world. He took on our sins so that he could give us his righteousness. Many of you say, well, I know that, that I'm, I'm securing that pastor. I got that. I understand that. But do you really understand that? Do you really understand that the only thing you had to do to become righteous was to have faith in Christ? So if you have faith in Christ, that means you are right with God. It was not based off of what you do or did. It's based off of what Jesus did. And that does not change even if you sin after you get born again. Your righteousness is not unraveled. You are not now all of a sudden kicked out of God's family because you made a mistake, because you sin. Let's call it what it is. The Bible calls it sin. It calls it missing the mark. Okay, I had the target. The target was to live this way, but I didn't do it consistently. Man, I fell off. I sinned. Okay, Jesus already took the penalty of that sin. So now what you need to do is forgive yourself because God already has forgiven you. And so you need to begin to forgive yourself and begin to step up. Because if you get stuck in your last mistake, you'll never move forward. And so Satan will try to get you to beat you up, to condemn you, because scripture says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for we operate in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made us free from the law of sin and death. That's in Romans 8 and 1. So now we got to realize, wait a minute, I'm right with God. Me and God are cool. He's my father, just like you as a parent. The fathers that are out there, the mothers that are out there, if your child make a mistake, did you, do you just kick them to the side and kick them to the curb and treat them like they trash? No. If your child walked around talking about themselves like some of us have walked around in the past and talked about ourselves, you will say to them, what is wrong with you? Why are you talking about yourself like that? If your child called themselves no good, if your child called themselves a failure, if your child called themselves defeated, there will be something in you that will even get upset with that mentality. No, you not. Don't you ever say that about yourself. So why are you saying that about yourself? And that's what God is trying to get across to you. Why are you talking bad about his creation and he made you righteous, created you in his image. So how dare you talk low and bad about who God created? So we got to understand that because what happens is condemnation, shame, and guilt will remove you from walking into what it is God created for you to have because you feel like you don't deserve it. And because your confidence has been shaken, your faith is shaken. And he says, cast not away therefore your confidence in Hebrews 10 35, which has great recompense of reward. 
Don't cast away your confidence. Confidence is an anointing activator. Confidence will attract the promises of God. Confidence will cause you to come in too. Because man, if you can just switch, if you can switch your thinking right now, you can automatically switch your direction. That's a pivot moment. That's a pivotal moment. When you change your mind, you'll change your, your direction. When you change your direction, you'll change your trajectory. When you change that, you'll change everything that'll begin to open up. Then you'll begin to see the answers that you need. Because now when things are dark and you need to speak life, because the Bible declares, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I got to go with it. Listen, the Bible says this, as you decree a thing, it's established and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. In other words, if you can't see what to do, declare that you have the answer and the answer will begin to show up because right now God is removing spiritual blindness from his people so that they can clearly see what direction they need to go into. God is saying this because some of you have been crying out for help and intercessors have been waking up. Intercessors have been praying. Intercessors have been declaring and decreeing. Even when you couldn't pray for yourself, other people have been praying for you. And God has been waking up people to begin to say, he can watch this because he says, I need somebody to release their authority so I can get involved in this situation. And if you ain't going to be the person that's going to open up your mouth, I got to wake up somebody else to declare and decree on your behalf so that you can wake up. But God is saying now, it's time for you and I to do it and don't depend on somebody else to do what it's your responsibility to do. But listen, if you need help, we all need help at times. I get it. I get it. But God is saying, I'm taking you from this place of being crippled by stuff that's happening to now saying it's time to arise. It's time to shine. It's time to go forth in this thing. So now you need to understand that you are the righteousness of God. Number two, you got to understand, well, within this identity, you got to understand that you're an ambassador for Christ as well. We just read it up in verse 20. He says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. In other words, we are, we are representatives of Christ. We are representatives. And we've said this in the times past that an ambassador does not live off of the land that it goes to, but the land that it comes from that the land that it comes from is responsible for taking care of that ambassador. So the U S ambassador to whatever nation that we send the, that individual to that they are taken care of, they have diplomatic immunity. They are taken care of by the land that they have come from. So if they need any supply, if they need any sufficiency, if they need anything taken care of, they just call back home and call on their government to now supply what is needed. And so your heavenly father is saying, Whatever you need, I got the supply. Whatever you need, because you're my ambassador that I send forth in the earth, it is glory to God. It is my responsibility, God says, to take care of you when you go do my business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my job to take care of you, God says. When I command you to go somewhere, when I command you to do something, when I speak to you, there is success in that thing because all glory to God, all of heaven's resources are at your disposal to get the job done. So you will succeed. So if you've been sensing God is leading you to do something for him, that he will back you up. The supply is there. The sufficiency is there. The trucks are there. The vans are there. The buildings are there. The people are there. The money is there. The favor is there. The yes is there. The contracts are there. Whatever you need, the supply is there and God will strengthen you. God will renew your strength like the eagles. Sometimes you feel so low and so, oh man, that's the word drain. You feel so drained because you're out of pocket. You're out of the rhythm of your grace. You're out of the sequence of what God has for you. And because you're out of the flow of God for your life, you begin to find yourself doing it in your effort versus allowing what the grace has been made available for you to do. So if God graced you to work over in, in, in Africa and you over in France somewhere, the great is going to be a struggle in France and it's going to be tiresome. It's going to be all of this stuff because you ain't graced to be there. You graced to be in another place. That's what your flow is. That's what your supply is. That's what your sufficiency is. So wherever your grace is, you need to get there. 
Amen. Whoever that's for, that just came out of nowhere. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Whew. Mm. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, in, in, um, in John 1.12, I want to show this to you. In John, we're still under the first thing, understanding your identity. Oh, man. Let me see how much time I got here. He says, we're in. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, John 1.12 says it like this. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So to as many as received Christ, to them, God gave us authority and the right to become the sons of God. So we see the prerequisite for becoming a son of God is to be born again, is to receive Christ. We receive him. We receive the one who sent him. And now we receive that spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and God, our daddy. Now, now this is something that the spirit of God began to deal with me about. There are many people who prayed about things, many people who admire other people's success, other people's grind, calling, and all of those things. But God has a specific, listen, it says in uh, the book of um, Ephesians 2.10, that God has already has, he already has a prearranged path for our lives. And in that path is the good life. In that path, that is not changing. That message is not changing. God wants you to live a good life. God wants things to be well. He wants your relationships well. He wants things to be well, but we have to cooperate with him, folks. It's not just going to be like magic falling out of the sky and just, you know, just like ripe fruit falling off the trees, there'll be some things that you easily possess, but there are some things that you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith for, that because you still have an enemy, you have the wicked one who comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, and he will try to block you from entering into your new season by throwing up smoke screens and distractions to get you off of the focus that you have to lock into, the discipline to get through that thing. Because if some of you just fight through the pain, if you can overcome this season of pain, you're about to enter into the most glorious time you've ever experienced. And so God is saying, I need for you to think like I think. I need you to believe who you are, to believe that you can create with the words of your mouth just like I created in the beginning. I created everything and set it in motion. And then I rested. I rested because I was finished. And because I was finished, listen, this is time for you to enter into your season of rest. But when you declare things and you decree things, now I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting to almost like the third point I wanted to make, but I'll go back and show you the scriptures and stuff that you need to create with the words of your mouth. You need to frame your world with the words of your mouth. So that means you and I have to govern what we say because we walk in this authority. We got to get this. We got to get this, folks. We got to get this. If you really got who you are, listen, the Bible calls us kings and priests in the book of Revelation. Uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 6. It says this, And from Jesus Christ, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, He's the prince of the kings of the earth, the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us, hath made us past tense kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We've been made kings and priests. A king is a ruler. A, a priest is one in, um, that's been appointed by God for priestly duties, sacred, a sacred office to now handle the spiritual matters of God in the earth. And a king is dealing also with political. So that means it's a ruler that's in touch with him. There's an individual, not only the sacred, but also the secular. There's a person who has now, who is an ambassador for Christ, has the power of God in and upon them, and now functions in their influence, their sphere of influence in this earth. And so now we got to understand, and part of the definition of a king, I, mean, I taught this thing years ago, it's called the best of both worlds, that part of the definition of a king was it's a chief amongst their competitors. 
In other words, you are the best at what you do. And if you don't consider yourself the best, you won't function as the best. You won't have the confidence that it takes to rule your niche, to rule your lane, to rule your area. I'm the best at what I do, glory to God. If you want the best, you come for Mike. I'm telling you, glory to God. I declare that and decree that. Man, that sound, that sound arrogant. No, that's confidence. I gotta, listen, God dealt with, with me about that. He said, it's time for you to pursue certain areas and certain lanes. He says, some of the reason why you didn't because you didn't believe that you were the best, the best option or the best choice for that thing. And he says, you need to change what you're thinking about yourself. And I was like, wow, I sure did. I sure have been thinking about it like that and didn't even realize it. It's like you've been comparing yourself with other people and people are out there doing that, comparing yourselves amongst yourselves. So that means you grade yourself on the curve. And then I had to realize that, wait a minute, can't nobody beat Mike being Mike. Can't nobody beat me being me. God gave me a voice. He gave me an anointing. He gave me a calling. And likewise, he gave you one too that you are the best at what you do. Somebody needs to hear your voice. Somebody needs to receive the gifts that you have on the inside of you. And you gotta believe who you are. You gotta believe that you have been marked by your heavenly father to make impact in this earth. So get up out of your despair and get up out of that lazy place. And it's time to move forward in this thing, glory to God. Whoever that's for, hallelujah. He's made us kings and priests. And I quoted it early in 1 John 4 and 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, talking about Christ, so are we. As he is, so are we. As he is, so are we. As Jesus is, I am. As Jesus is, I am. Man, as Jesus is, I am. God's word says it. I didn't make this up. God brought it up. You need to understand who you are. You need to understand who you, I'm telling you, go to um, Psalm 8. Oh, I got to read this to you. Psalm chapter 8, or the eighth division of Psalm verses 4 through 8. Oh, let me look at my time. Let me look at my time. Man, ah, I got to get ready to wrap this up. He says, watch this. These are the angels talking about uh, talking about us as men in the earth. It says this, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited, visitest him for thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. He says, what is man? What is man? What is man? That you are mindful of him. And I like this. He says in verse five, that thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. That's not talking about the cherubims and seraphims and the created angels. This word in the Hebrew is actually translated Elohim, meaning God. It means you made him a little lower than yourself. You got to, man, you got to understand this. You got to understand the authority. Remember this now. Remember that Satan is a fallen archangel. So if God created man above the angels, we are already positioned above Satan who's a fallen archangel. See, we got to, we got to, man, we got to renew our minds to this stuff because we always, most people think that Satan is just, when we think antichrist, it's almost like we think that he's the equivalent of God, but just the negative version of form. Uh-uh. He is a created, Satan is a created being that failed because pride, iniquity was found in his heart and he wanted God's place. So he got kicked out of heaven along with a third of the angels that went with him and followed him. He is, your, Lord, I remember, man, I forgot about this. I remember years ago, I fell into, I don't know if I was praying or I was just doing something. I fell into this trance. It was like a trance state. It was almost like a daydream type state. And in this state, I saw this little figure in the dark and it was shriveled up, but it was shaking. 
I heard the voice of the Lord say, this is Satan. This is how you need to view him because he is afraid of those who understand their authority. The scripture even says, it may be in Isaiah, I forgot exactly where, that when we finally see Satan, we're going to say, is this the one that, that caused all of this havoc? Is this the one that caused nations and kingdoms to fall and people to fall? You mean this the dude? Because what, see, and what Satan wants to do is to put a wrong image of himself before you to cause us to be fearful of him. And God is saying, I don't need you to be afraid of him because you've been created above him. Man, I'm telling you, man, come on, man, come on, come on now. This, 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 this here, this here, and you freaking out over demons. Now see, now see, this is why, this is why it's important for us not to view things that will cause our image of ourselves to be lessened. See, some, some people are like, well, what's wrong with watching horror movies? What's wrong with watching? Certain things we got to be mindful of because now it's steeped in fear. And what Satan will try to do is, and you've seen it in those movies, it always seemed like the, print, the priest uh, in those movies are being whipped by the devil. And like the devil got all this power, but man has no power. Wait a minute. As a believer on Jesus, we got all the power. We got all the authority that has been granted unto us by the Lord Jesus. And so if, if that thing was really showing the real deal, Satan ain't got nothing on us. He cannot touch us if we don't allow him to. And what we, what he does is he uses our authority against us because even in Luke 10, 19, it says it like this. Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, behold, I give unto you power. That word power is from the Greek word exousia or authority to tread on serpents, to tread on scorpions and over all the power of that word power is ability of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt you. Not just physically, yes, it includes no physical hurt, harm, or danger, but also no mental hurt, harm, or danger, no mental abuse. You can only be hurt if you allow the person who's saying whatever they're saying or doing whatever they're doing. If you're allowing their actions to hurt you, if you make a decision, I refuse to be hurt by what you just said. You got power to do that. I refuse to be offended by what you just said, because now I'm going to function in the agape of God, the love of God. And listen, that's a work. I get it. I get it. I know it ain't always the easiest thing. It don't see, it don't feel like the easiest thing. If somebody cuts you out, that you treat them right. If somebody do you wrong, your first inclination is to do them wrong and try to prove them wrong and try to do all of this stuff. Listen, God is saying this. If you don't allow it, it can't hurt you. If you don't allow it to hurt you, you have that authority. You have that power. You have that ability. Listen, if I know who I am in Christ and my wife come and call me outside of that, I'm like, you are lying to Lincoln the breath thing. I'm not going to say that to her right now. I'm not saying my wife wouldn't say that to me. She ain't never done that to me. But you get the point of what I'm saying. Even though what she says, I value tremendously. If she calls me something outside of what God has said, I'm so steeped in who God called me to be. I'm like, I know that ain't me because I know who I am. See, you listen, the closest person, the person you most respect, you most love can say something negative about you. And when you are solid in who you are and your identity, it will not move you. See, I know that sound, that sound like a dream to some of y'all. It sounds like, nah, 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 I can't, you know, I can't, I can't see myself doing that. Man, it just hurt too much. Well, if you never see yourself doing it, you'll never have it. This is why God said, teach my people who they are. There are things that God has revealed to me over the years, folks, that he has brought in me. And sometimes everybody don't understand it. Everybody don't get it. Man, you hard. No, I'm hard. It's, 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 it's the thing where God is saying, I need my people to wake up. I need them to wake up to see just how powerful they are. And they keep laying down their power and now allowing Satan to just beat you. That's like a two year old. I'm allowing a two year old to whip me. And I'm a big grown man. 
And that child, if somebody, if you was to see a two-year-old whipping me, you would think something's wrong with me. It's like, what, what is wrong with you? You three times the size of that child, and you letting that child beat you, and, over, and that's what we do with Satan. That's how he looks. That's how he is to us. Oh, man, he hates, who he hates this. Okay. I'm going to preach it. Because I, I, sometimes I sense as I preach these things, it's almost like you hear it, but I need you to meditate on it until it comes alive in you. Until it comes alive in you. See, it comes alive in me. That's why I preach it with such passion. Because once that, that revelation hits you, you begin to function in it. Second thing. And I think I'm going to get rid of Well, actually, I started dealing with some of this stuff already. The second is your position in Christ. You understand your identity, you got to understand your position. The book of Ephesians 2, 5, and 6 says, even when we were dead in sins, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. It says, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ, in the anointed one, in his anointing, in that ability. We're seated together with Christ. The Bible says he's far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Well, yeah, Pastor, I get that. I've heard that. I've heard that. I know some of y'all have heard it. But do you believe it? Do you exercise it? Do you see when men say, oh, man, when, when um, in the book of, um, I think I taught on this. Man, it might have been Thursday. I'm not sure. But when Jesus asks, he says, who do men say that I am? Then they begin to say, you know, some think you're um, Isaiah, you know, some think you're Elijah. Um, some think you're just a good prophet. Some think you're this or that. He says, okay, but who do you say that I am? Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood ain't revealed that to you but my father. <clears throat> in other words, there are certain things you don't see until it's revealed to you. And my prayer is that the eyes of your understanding will begin to be enlightened so you can see the fullness of who you are. Some of you need to begin to now lay hands on yourself and begin to speak to parts of your body that have been malfunctioning even now and begin to exercise your authority. And begin to even close your eyes and visualize that body part being transformed and recreated even as you speak. As you begin to speak. Yeah, do it now. There's somebody that your kidneys is your pancreas, your kidneys. Declaring my pancreas secretes the proper amount of insulin that promotes life and health. That will remove even the diagnosis of diabetes that I begin to eat properly, but I also speak and command my pancreas to function properly. I speak to my kidneys. So kidneys, you have to obey me because this body is the house that I live in. Because the real me is the spirit. So I speak to you right now and I command you to structure yourself. Now, if you got to study out what the function of the kidney is and the function of the pancreas is so that you know how to properly target your faith and how to speak the right words, heart valves, I command you to open up blood vessels. You expand properly and contract properly. That blood flows properly through every fiber of my being, promoting life and health. I command my arteries to be elastic and strong and command any clogged artery to be unclogged. I rebuke heart attacks right now. I rebuke heart disease. Heart, you beat with the rhythm of life. You produce pure blood and pump pure blood, clean blood throughout my body. My oxygen levels are normal. My mind is normal. I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within me. I command every nerve. I command every tendon. I command every joint. I command cartilage to be replaced in my knees. I command things to be restored in my body in the name of Jesus. And the light of God's favor will begin
begin to shine upon your ways. Then in some of your cases, the Holy Ghost will start telling you, drink more water every day. Put this supplement in your body. Begin to eat this. Begin to rest more. Begin to exercise to keep your joints moving because a body in motion stays in motion. And it's hard for arthritis to set in when you constantly moving. It's when you stop living that you stop living. Somebody need to hear that. Some of you have already taken the diagnosis and have accepted defeat where you have authority to now change and rearrange and you will begin to see and doctors will be amazed at how quickly your levels have dropped and normalized that your blood pressure is normal. And then God starts saying, stop stressing about stuff. And the reason you stressing about stuff is because your faith is small and your faith is small because you ain't been in the word and you ain't been in the word because you're allowing other stuff to come. And now you spend more time on Netflix than you do in the presence of God. And now if you feed off of one thing, it's going to cause you to grow stronger in fleshly and carnal things versus feeding off the word of God. That's going to cause you to be stronger in spiritual things. You cannot feed off the flesh and expect to be strong in the spirit. It don't work that way. Whatever you feed the most is what's going to be most dominant in our lives. That's how the system works, folks. And if you want to be strong, if you want to grow, if you want to increase, we got to do what's necessary to get the job done in Jesus name. Shoot. I give myself an offering on that one, man, whatever. Yes, Lord. That's it's the truth. It's the truth. You got to understand your position. I'm seated together with Christ. God has given me authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt me. Corona can't hurt me. Corona can't hurt me. So listen, I follow the protocols and I do all those things. Listen, I'm not against the vaccines. I'm not against all of that stuff. We got to be mindful. You got to research and make sure that you're comfortable doing things. But whether I took a vaccine or not, my confidence ain't in the vaccine. My confidence is in the God's word and in the power of his word that I know that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria that touches my body dies instantly in Jesus name. And there is no level of fear in me concerning. Oh man, I had to say it like that. Who? It's like, how in the world? How in the world? Yes, I know this type of talk is bold. Everybody don't believe it like this. Everybody don't think it like this. And this is why God has given me a mandate. He says, go teach my people who they are. And I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your faith. I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have to be confident. This is why we declare in decree in the name of Jesus that things work together for our good. Things work out well for us in Jesus name. Lastly, this goes into what I just demonstrated, understanding your, your stance. So understanding your identity, understanding your position, but also understanding your stance. That means enforcing your authority. The Bible says in James four and seven, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God, come up under his mission. Listen, follow him, obey him, resist the devil. That means to add, apply pressure, force, resistance. When we resist through the words of our mouths, we rebuke, we rebuke. That's what rebuke, rebuke in essence is saying stop no more. Stop. You tell Satan, stop in your attacks. Stop. You stop. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Stop. No more arguments between me and my wife. Stop. We ain't letting this strife. We ain't letting strife come in. Stop. I rebuke sickness and disease. Stop. No more. Man, I, I want, man. We, we have authority. We have authority. Over all the ability of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt us. I am not getting off of this. I'm going to preach it till Jesus come. I'm telling you, I'm, if the Lord tarry and I go by way of the grave, I'm going to preach this thing faithfully. I'm going to preach it loud and I'm preaching it from the top to the bottom, bottom and all the way around this planet. I am taking this word to everybody who will hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But there are just some things that only God has control over. God is in control. Wait a minute now. God is sovereign. And yes, he is sovereign. But you got to realize something. In his sovereignty, he set certain laws in motion. And he's given us authority 
over the works of his hands. So whatever we, no, okay, in the book of Matthew 18, 18, he says, Verily I say unto you, this Jesus, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye, you, me, us, you and I shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, whatever you bind, that word bind means whatever you don't allow won't be allowed from heaven. Whatever you do allow will be allowed. So what are we allowing? We have the authority not to allow it anymore. We got to grow in our faith in this folks. We got to grow in our faith. We got to grow in our faith. And I mean that this means transformation. See, it's hard to walk in your authority and you use your tongue for gossip all the time. You're training your tongue to be a voice, an instrument of divisiveness. See, bitter and sweet water can't come out the same cistern, the Bible says. If you're, listen, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if your heart is full of junk, that's what's going to flow out of you. We got to work on this. We got to work on this. We got to work on this. Listen, I, I like to look at shows and movies just as much as the next person. But what God is saying, in order for you to walk in power, I've been in both places. I know what it's like when you set certain things aside and you lock in and begin to seek God and that power begin to rise up. I mean, your spiritual sensitivity rises. The confidence and the power rises. Manifestations begin to rise and begin to happen at a greater level. It's whatever. See, when we look at the price tag for it, then sometimes that's when we put it back on. Okay, that, that costs too much. That means it's going to cost me time. It's going to cost me some energy, some effort. It's going to cost me discipline. It's going to cost me doing something that I, I really want to do, but I know it's not going to be beneficial. The Bible says all things are lawful, but all things are expedient. They're not profitable, profitable for me to do. Okay, yeah, just because the world said it's okay don't mean God said it's okay. It's not profitable. Yeah, it's legal to smoke. It's legal to smoke, but you know it's bad for your body. It kills people. It creates cancer. It's destroyed many lives, but people still do it. It's lawful, but it ain't profitable. And so just because something is lawful, just because they put weed and legalized marijuana don't mean it's right for you to still smoke it and get high. Oh, yeah, I know I hit some of you with that because some of you just waiting for it to be lawful so that you can feel like it's moral and it don't match. We as the body of Christ don't function like the world functions. And this is why, too, you got to watch who you hanging around. If people feel, feel you full of junk and they feed the flesh side of you, you're going to walk in the flesh. And you need to be around people that's going to challenge you to grow in the spirit. Yeah, you are what you eat. The Bible says evil communication will corrupt good manners. So the people that you hang around, you hang around people with your answer and not your problem. You hanging around people that's worse off than you and you expect because one or two things are going to happen. Either that environment impacts you or you impact it. And if you ain't strong enough to impact it, it's but a matter of time that that junk starts creeping into your psyche, your subconscious, and you start thinking like the people you hanging with. You got to watch it. And then you try to figure out how did I get here? Because little by little, Satan has been sowing stuff. Little by little, that mindset has been getting in you. And I, all of a sudden, it begins to quiet your spirit. And now because your mind is so consumed with junk, it quiets the voice of your spirit. And you try to figure out, how come I can't hear God now? Because it's so cluttered. God said, I'm visiting you today. I know this is strong. I know it's strong. Sometimes I'll go back and listen to these messages myself, and I'm like, whew, ugh. But it has to be shared. We have to grow. We have to increase. This is a serious matter, folks. This is life and death, literally, for people. There are people who are so afraid of the virus. Some of you only want to say, just call it the Rona. I'm a, and make jokes about it. Listen, some people don't take things serious. Some people is like, I'm like, listen, this is what's happening there on this earth. So much concern has been pumped, and I say to fear, 
has been pumped through the media, then now sometimes the world says, okay, just go back to living the way you were. But listen, after you done pumped a bunch of fear, people now, their faith level got to rise up again to even be comfortable to go back to how they used to live. We got to be mindful. Some of that stuff you need to turn off. I understand. Be informed. Find out what's happening in certain things. I, I get all that. Hear the heart of what I'm saying. If you realize now that every time somebody cough and sneeze, there's something in you that flinches, oh, you're more confident of catching something than that the power of God in you can reject it and destroy it. See, see, it's, it's like, yeah. if you're not used to thinking that, Amen. It's my job to preach it. It's my job to preach it. Oh, I'm going to say something strong. I know, I, I know how it's going to sound. I know how I might come across. But this is how God does with us. God is not, he is not coming to live at your level. He's calling you to come up to his. I was going to say I'm not. Yeah. And then once I start believing something, I get a hold of it from the word of God. You're not bringing me back down to where you are. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming to get you to come on up hither where the real sons and daughters of God live. Mm. Come on, lift up. You've been around, you've been around this anointing. Some of you have been around this anointing too long to still act the way you act. Just like, I feel like Jesus sometimes. Have you not been with me for so long that you don't know? How much more? What is it that got to be said? God is saying, have I not shown you my goodness? Have I not manifested myself to you in times past? Am I not the same God that brought you out that former pit? Am I not the same God that saved you? Am I not the same God that delivered you? Am I not the same God that brought the rent in to pay for it before? Am I not the same God that found you a new job when you lost the first one? Am I not the same God that brought peace in the midst of a storm and that thing turned around? If I did it before, can I not do it again? Am I not the same God that created the heavens and the earth? Am I not the same God that created the angels and all the animals and everything that creepeth upon this earth? Surely I can do it again. Wake up, church. Now, if this ain't for you, it ain't for you. But it's for everybody. This for me. I'm stirring myself up, reminding myself. So listen, I'm in this thing with you. I'm st I, I remind myself, if I sense any fear, I remind myself, wait a minute, boy, what you doing? Who are you? Remember who you are. Declare who you are. Speak who you are. I'm, I'm coming at the devil with both guns blazing. Glory to God. And we're going to make a mark that can never be erased. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Sure, la la basata. Hmm. Should have bought a Honda. Yes, I did. Yes, come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. God loves me. God loves him so much that he sent his son to die for me. He died just for me. You better take ownership. Mm, he died for me. He died just for me. He loved him so much. He has crowned me with favor. He has crowned me with his loving kindness and tender mercies. Everything I set my hands to prospers. It flourishes. It works. People, listen, people change their mind to help me. They could have said no to everybody else. But as soon as I walk up, the first thing they come into contact with is my favor shield. Because I've been declaring favor every single day. Some of you have been quitting on talking about favor. Some of you, the reason why, because you ain't been believing it. You ain't been expecting it. You better expect the favor of God. Listen, I don't care. I ain't getting off of nothing that God been telling me to do. I'm telling you a thousand are falling my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. It ain't coming near my house. I declare and decree that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches our bodies dies instantly. Glory to God. Shoot, I'm finished now. Man, I'm, 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 I'm glory to God. <laughs> I'm ready to take off running. Shoot. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Favor is on you. I don't care who in position of authority. 
even ungodly authorities are granting petitions unto you. And if they don't want to grant it, God will remove them and put somebody there that will approve it. We've been there. I remember we were believing for a car one time. My wife and I first got uh, married. We were believing for this car. This lady, we worked with this gentleman. This lady, I mean, she got this thing approved, I mean, with the quickness. It was just the favor of God. Man, went back one week later, the lady was gone from the place. God had her there long enough just to approve us, and she was gone. We've seen the hand of God, and God will begin to stir us up and say, remember how I did this? Remember I was with you? See, you just look at the bad side and the negative side, but don't you see my hand of provision has been there with you all along where many people would have lost their mind, but I kept you in perfect peace? Yeah, there were times, my wife and I, the thought of divorce came and all of those things. But you know what? For me, divorce was never an option. And I'm like, whatever got to be corrected is going to be corrected because I cannot stand before God's people and now be like Paul says, preach to you and be a castaway. I refuse. That means if something ain't going right, I need to change it. It ain't God's fault. It's mine. His word is incorruptible. So that means it's something going on in the ground of my heart that ain't producing the 30, 60, or 100 fold that I got to correct so that I can see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And God is saying, this is your turning point right now. Choose you this day whom you going to serve. Man, go, man, I feel the anointing to preach all over me right now. It's time to stir up. It's going to turn around. He's the God. Yeah. He's the, I'm the God of the turnaround. I'm the God of the turnaround. I'm the God of the turnaround. Yeah. The bridge stick on. Yeah. You thought that I just manifested something for you, but I, yeah, that was lower and beneath what I wanted you to have. God is saying, yeah, some of you are about to move out into something else. Some God says, I'm about to open up new doors that no man can shut. I'm about to cause great favor and there will be an expedited plan that you will sense the wind of God behind you. I see it like this. It's like the wind of God pushing you on your back to push you into what it is he's calling you to do. And you will sense a force that is leading, guiding, pulling, directing you into this new season, into this new place. And God's saying, that's me. I'm drawing you out into your wealthy place. I'm drawing you out into your place of provision, prominence, and promotion. Everything you've been praying out. He says, I've heard it. And I'm trying to manifest it. And the fight that you're feeling is you struggling against my promptings, my leadings, guidings, and direction. Because I'm leading you into uncomfortable places for you. Well, you're going to have to think different, talk different, believe different, function different. You can't be lazy and go into the new season I got you to go into. You got to be disciplined to handle great things. Some of you want to be a boss but can't discipline your daily agenda. He says you got to conquer your every day to see the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God manifested. To see these big things you've been preaching and been talking about, praying about, believing for, all of that, it's going to take a whole new regimen now, baby. <laughs> but you ready? You ready, God says. You've been ready. Let it become the, I should preach it. The, the title should be the new normal. The new normal. The new normal. Man, come on, I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop this stuff that's flowing. I don't know if y'all just pulling on me or what. This thing is flowing. There is a new normal that's hitting. There is a new normal that's hitting. There is a new normal. There is a new normal. Some of you going to be quick to clean out your house to get rid of old stuff that has been taking the place of the brand new that God says I want to bring in. Some of you got old cars and driveways that need to be removed because you ain't going to drive them anyway. And God said, I'm trying to get something new to you. You can't get the new Jaguar, Mercedes, or Benz if you got the old thing sitting there on blocks. and st Man, you got to make room for what's new. You got to make room. Clean out your closet. Get ready for the new. Do whatever you got to do. Organize your paperwork. Make ready for the new. You got to have, some of you need to get a, um, what do you call it, a safe, a fire safe, so you can handle your proper documents. You ain't been, you ain't been, listen, you have not structured for increase. And God is saying, I need you to structure for increase. And the floodgates will open. 
and you will begin to go into different tax brackets as you begin to now master each level. God is going to bump you up to the next one. You've sown so much seed in the past. You made so many confessions, but you failed to do the practical work that's going to get you there. And he's saying, I'm seeing it just as doggone it, just as clear as my name is Michael May. I am telling you, he says, if you structure yourself right, if you structure yourself for increase, I will breathe on it. I will blow on it and you will see manifested goodness like you have never seen before. You need to think like a CEO. You need to think like an owner. You need to think, stop thinking like a beggar and think like a giver that you're the borrower and not the lender. You're the bank. Glory to God. I'm telling you, you got to start thinking this thing, man. Okay. 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 Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody gave us some buildings, just gave it to us. Say here, I got the Lord woke me up and said to turn it over to you because you know what to do with it now. He said, turn it over, turn it over in the name. Man, who glory to God, who glory to God, who glory to God. Man, I'm telling you, you talking about some supernatural deal that you ain't never seen before. You better go ahead and get ready that God going to drop prices. He going to, yeah, interest rates going to drop for you. But now all of a sudden it's going to be a twofold thing. Interest rates will drop for you to acquire stuff, but God is going to increase your investments at the same time. Glory to God. One price going to come down and one going to go up. Glory to God. And what it's going to do is going to open up and create a greater wealth gap in your life. And there's going to see, man, you're going to see the goodness. I'm trying to get it out as fast as it's coming. But I'm telling you, the glory of God is going to be seen in your life like you have never seen before. You're going to see unprecedented moves of the spirit of God. You're going to see signs and wonders that have only been talked about in times past. We're going to see a resurgence. We're going to see the lame walk. We're going to see the maimed heal. We're going to see blinded eyes open, deaf ears open, the dead raised up. And I'm telling you, God is who glory. Go ahead and get ready for it. For the time is here. The time is here. The time is here. The time is here. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah, I see it. When you stay in your vein, the power shows up. Will you do what you're supposed to do? Hmm. He is only God. Mm, God is only required to underwrite what he authorized. He is only required to underwrite what he authorized. That means he is only obligated to provide for what he told you to do. And if you're trying to get him to fund what he didn't authorize you to do, that's why you see a struggle. Hallelujah. All right. Every head bow, I right, cool. Father, thank you. Glory. Glory. If you need to get born again, get born again now. If you ain't made Jesus the Lord of your life, do it now. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come inside my heart now. I make you Lord of my life now. I submit my life to you. I've been a sinner, but now I declare that I am saved by grace through faith. I'm saved by grace through faith. I'm a child of yours now. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I'm, if you want to become a member of this ministry, a partner with this ministry, listen, go ahead. There's some information coming up where you can connect with us. Go to our website at spiritify.us. If you want to send us a direct message through here, I don't care at this point. Just have, get to us. Let us know. Hey, I want to get born again. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to become a member, a partner of this ministry. I want to connect with you guys. I am being fed from this ministry. And I want to be a part of the Spirit of Fire Fellowship, a fellowship of believers. This is an organization of belonging. 
where God wants you to learn who you are, to begin to function in your purpose, begin to have the passion and fire ignited to do his way of his way of doing and being right. We the place for you. I'm the man. My wife is the woman for you. We here to pour the word of God into you, to challenge you to be all who God called you to be and to love you unconditionally. But through that love, that agape and to honor and to, to serve you, we're here to serve our generation with faithfulness and gladness. And then that may mean sometimes, yeah, sometimes it comes strong, but it's only for your good. It's only because we love you so much. And then, listen, I can't stand the enemy. I hate to see him bully God's people in any way, shape, fashion, or form. I've always hated bullets coming up. And it's like, man, I'm telling you, and I hate to see Satan beating up God's people and seeing people defeated. When I see people defeated, something rise up in me. The anointing, the power of God upon my life begins to activate. And I attack that thing. It's just how I'm wired. I'm here to make you better. We're here to make you better. We love you guys. So if that's you, you want to connect, follow the prompts. The information is coming up, how you can connect with us. And at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. Listen, so I challenge people to sow. I challenge you to sow today. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you today. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That God will be called, he'll cause, begin to cause men to give unto your bosom. He said, with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. I want to challenge some people. I feel this strong too. I want to challenge some of you that you have not sown into this ministry in any way, shape, fashion, or form, especially as a member and partner of this ministry, God is challenging me, you, challenging you to sow now. Uh-uh. Listen. He's challenging you to sow now. I know the Bible says don't do it under compulsion or of necessity, but sometimes you got to help people break out of stuff that Satan has, has caused them to be so stagnant and fearful. Whatever it is, husbands and wives, listen, y'all know Jesus watched over the offering. He said, why is that so important? See, there they go. They just want money. It's all about money. No, because see, I understand the importance of money. See, now part of what I haven't taught yet, even in dealing with uh, wealth and, and prosperity and the kingdom laws, one of the ways to come out of certain situations is through a seed. When you sow a seed, not only does it affect you financially, but it impacts other areas of your life. When the widow woman in the book of First Kings 17, I believe, uh, first or second, Kings, I think it's First Kings, when Elijah went to this widow woman's house, God says, I've commanded her to sustain you. Not only after she sold into Elijah's life did her and her family eat, the Bible says, for a full year. Not only that, her son died. And because the prophet of God was there, he raised her son up from the dead. So not only was her financial life impacted, but now her son being raised from the dead, physical things will took place as well. That not only will your seed will meet every need. Or Roberts preached that years ago. A seed will meet every need. And if you're robbing God by robbing him of his honor, that means you're robbing. Listen, God blessed you and you have yet to even give a portion. And listen, especially those who have fed off of this ministry, fed off of the word that we've sown for years and years, and you have still, just, it, it, the Bible calls you stiff-necked. It's like you're being so stubborn not to do it that God says, because you resist me, I'll resist you. Oh, Lord, I, well, I mean, it, it got to come out. It got to come out. Because people don't realize, and Satan will rob you of manifestation if he can cause you to hold back what rightfully belongs to God. This is honor that we give him when we sow, when we give, when we tithe and we give offering. We're showing honor to God. If we hold back in this area, we shut up things from happening. You can't function under, under an open heaven being stingy. Yo, it got to be said, man, whatever. Love me, leave me. If you're a person who's always a taker but never a giver, you got to watch that. That shows something in your heart. It's time to do it. Now listen, there's some who've been doing it. Praise God. Listen, if the shoe fit, wear it. It's just bottom line. This ain't going to bother somebody who's doing it. It's only going to hit the person that it me is meant to go towards. Just is what it is. You can get angry with me. God loves me. 
So I'm good. I am good. I, listen, God has so set me free from people now. I am great. I don't want people to leave certain things or whatever. But it, listen, if you can't handle it, I'm telling you, God, I'm not going to dumb down who I am just to conform to you. Okay, I say, I'm going to just leave it right there. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to get in the flesh. I ain't going to get in the flesh. I ain't getting in the flesh. But I got to say certain things to jar you to wake you up, folks. It's because I love you. God says whom he loves, he chastens. He corrects. If I ain't care nothing about you, I wouldn't say nothing to you. I wouldn't. Because God increasing us, he blessing us, so I could just be like, I'm good, so forget everybody else. That's not the heart of God. That's not our heart. You got to know us. You know when pastors speak, you know I love you. <laughs> Amen. This is some passion you got to do. Sometimes you got to do it. Amen. Glory to God. And one thing I learned, too, is sometimes I, I tell people, and I learned this uh, from Bishop Jakes years ago, you know, uh, sometimes you got to handle certain things privately so that you can shout publicly. Now, there's some things I had to go to people privately and say, no, you're you violating the principles. It, it's the order of God that's being disrupted. That's why some things ain't working. I'm just being straight up. The scripture talks about it. And it's my job to teach you. I would be a poor steward if I didn't. And God will hold me accountable. I ain't having it. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. So I love you. Love you. I love you too, Pastor. Go ahead and type. I love you too, Pastor. Some of you may not even want to. It's all right. It's okay. I love you. Amen. Pray the love. Pray the love. All right. Well, that information is coming up on your screen. I done preach now. I'm grab me something to eat. Amen. Love you guys so much. <laughs> but I'm going to pray a final word over you. I'm going to pray a final word over you. I pray that God's goodness, God's favor, God's grace, God's love, and his kindness manifest in your life. I pray that things work together for your good, man. I'm telling you, I love you so much. And I declare and decree that the best is yet to come. And I need you to receive that. I need you to receive it. 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 See, get rid of the strife. Get, get rid of the offense. Because if you got offended by anything I just said, you need to check it. Check your heart. I know sometimes things will come strong. Sometimes I done tried soft. But now God got to come direct with some things and deal with some things. And the breaker, out of the book of Micah, it talks about the breaker showing up to break up fallow ground so that now God, the harvest can come forward. So may your harvest spring forward in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all guys. I have taken so much time. Um, listen, out of time, certainly not out of message, but we do believe that there is something that will be shared. That's been shared as that. I pray that's been a blessing to your life. I know the word of God is good, man. And so I want you to go back, replay this message. If you have to sit through it, it might be tough, and you know, you feel encouragement, then you feel a rebuke. And sometimes you got to stay there. You got to stay there and hear and let it be sown in your heart so that now the seed can get in your heart so that now it can spring forth in the harvest and fruitfulness. So this is Pastor Mike here. Like I always say in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, with Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where we're changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.